So today's video is going to be a fun one. We're going to look at the evolution of the conditional logic feature inside of Bricks Builder. So if you're brand new to Bricks Builder or you've only been using Bricks Builder with the recent versions, it's definitely a video that you're going to want to watch because if you go to Bricks Builder right now and I said to you, let's go ahead and this section here only show that to people that are logged out of WordPress. You probably know that you could click on this element here. You could go up to here under conditions and click and you could add a condition and then he could do user log in is and then logged out. So if the user is logged out of WordPress, show this on the page, otherwise don't output it on the page. And if we save that and preview this on the front end, so I'm logged into WordPress here, so it's not being output on the page. And what I mean by that is if I go and have a look at the actual code here, it's not outputting the HTML. Like it's not just using CSS to show and hide it on the page. It's literally not outputting that code on the page. And if I go to a private browser where I'm logged out of WordPress, and go down, you can see that that is showing. And that's because I'm logged out of WordPress. So if I'm logged out, this is true. And because this is true, it shows in the private browser. But, but again, coming back, that wasn't always the case. There's a lot of work that goes into implementing something like this feature into the native interface here inside of Bricks Builder. And sometimes what happens is that us users need a feature ur more urgently or faster than can be implemented in a clean way inside of the builder. And so what Bricks Builder actually did with this specific feature is they met us halfway and they gave us ways to use a little bit of PHP code to go out and show and hide elements on the page until they had refined this user interface ability. And so I think it's really good to get people up to speed that are new to Bricks Builder or have jumped into the ecosystem just to give you an idea of how Bricks Builder has evolved over time. And I think this one feature is a really good insight into how the Bricks Builder team works. And this feature also highlights how the Bricks Builder team want to listen to their users. And if we need something and they can't make it fast enough, they will, again, like I said, meet us halfway, give us something until they can polish up that feature and put it into the builder. So let's jump in and look at the first ways that we could go out and show and hide elements on the page inside of Bricks Builder in the first versions of the builder. So let's jump in and I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now and get out of the condition of builder and I'm going to save this. So let's go ahead and recreate what we had just set up where I only want to show this section to people that are logged out of WordPress. So the way that we initially had to do that and again if I'm there's been a couple of different ways along the way so if I have missed any of them please leave them in the comments below. These are the ones that I remember myself using. The first way that I remember that I could go out and hide things on the page is as follows. Firstly we'd go to the dashboard and we go to to bricks and we go down to templates and then here I would add a new template and here I'll write lead magnet download WP toolkit and then here under the template type I would select that it is a section and I would go down and click publish and then I would edit with bricks and then I would go back here and I would get this section here so I'd go right click and I would go down to copy and then I'd go over to that new template that we created that section template and I would paste it into here and then I would save and then I would come back here in the builder and I would delete it from the builder here. So I'd go delete and then I'm just going to collapse all of this so we can see what we're doing. And so now we need to add that template that we just created back into this page. Now you could go up to here and search for the template element and click here and then drag that to where it needs to go and then click here and then click under here and select that template, which was uh, lead magnet. And that's not showing. We need to save and then reload the page. So I'll just do that quickly. If that's saved, let's reload and I'll just collapse that, click back on my template and let's search for that again, lead magnet. So there it is. So I'll click and go down. And now you can see we've inserted that template here into the page. But the problem with using the template element is you can't set any conditions anywhere. So what we actually needed to do is get rid of this. So not do this. So I'll go delete and we needed to add a code element. So here I'll go add code element and then I'll drag it into where it needs to go and then I'll get rid of that. And then we'll go into our admin area. So I'll go to bricks and then templates. And then here you can see where our lead magnet is here, that section template, we get the short code. So we can just copy this short code and then come back here. And then here we're gonna write a little bit of PHP. So I'll go PHP as you normally would. And then we will just write echo and then do underscore short code and do short code is just a WordPress function. So it's in WordPress core. And then inside here, we put our actual short code 
And then the key is to go down to here where it says execute code and do this. Because if you don't select this, it's just going to output the code on the page as if I was writing a blog post on how to write code. I obviously don't want the code executing. I want you to be able to read that code in my tutorial. But we don't want you to read this code. We wanna actually execute this PHP. And so I'll come down here and go execute code. And now that's gonna run. Uh, but I'll save this and reload the page. And if we go down and just collapse that quickly so we can see, and you see there it is there. I'm not sure why the spacing is off there. Let's just save this and preview it on the front end and go down. It looks good there. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure if that's a bug or something like that. Now coming back into here, we're outputting this template here, but now we need to add the condition to only show this template if the user is logged out of WordPress. And the way that we do that is just using a little bit of PHP. So we're gonna get where we're outputting the template here. And I'm just gonna wrap that in an if. So if like that, and we'll close the if. So if is user logged in. So all this does is go, if the user is logged in, this returns true. If the user logged in is false, it returns false. So if the user is logged in is true, output this. We actually wanna invert that. We only wanna show this if the user is logged out. So here we uh, put an exclamation mark. So if the user logged in is false, i.e. the user is logged out, now we'll output our short code. So now let's go ahead and save this. And then back on the front end here, if we go down, you can see I'm logged in here, so it's not outputting on the page. But if I go to our private browser and just reload the page and go down, you can see it's outputting there on the page. So that's the first way that we were able to go out and achieve conditional logic on the page by creating a template inside a Bricks Builder, adding it into a code block, and then just writing PHP for our conditions. Now, the next way that Bricks Builder gave us to show and hide elements on the page was using their PHP render feature. So the easiest way to go and find this is just go to Bricks Builder render function inside of Google, and then just click on this one here. So the academy.bricksbuilder.io. You can also just go to the URL that's in my bar up the top currently. Or I'm sure you could just go to academy.bricksbuilder.io and just search for render up here. But once you get to this page, it documents how you can go and add some PHP to show and hide elements on the page. So you can see it's a filter. So add filter, this, return render. And if we go down and see an element where we're only trying to output it for people that are logged in. So we have our filter here. So if the element with the ID is this, I'm gonna show you how to find the ID of elements in just a second. If the element with this ID, this is trying to be rendered on the page, return is user logged in. And this is what we're actually about to look at in just a second, because it's a little bit hard to understand exactly what this was doing, at least for me at the start, not being a PHP professional, but uh, I will show you exactly what this is doing. Uh, but this is really the code that where we can get the ID of an element and only sh show it and hide it if a user is logged in. So let's go ahead and copy this. And now we need to add this PHP snippet inside of our website. So the way that I add all my custom PHP snippets, my CSS and my JavaScript is using a plugin called WP code box. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. It will take you to this page here. You can see it currently has a lifetime deal that's 20% off. And if you go to the pricing table and go down, it's $59. And uh, I reckon this is going to be the best $59 you've ever spent. It is, it is actually a game changer. You don't have to go into appearance and theme file editor and write any custom code in a child theme anymore. I do everything inside a WP code box. So let's go into WP code box. So here it is in the menu. I'll click over to here. And then we're going to add a new snippet. So I'll go new snippet and I'll call this CL for conditional logic. And this will be bricks builder. And this is gonna be a PHP snippet. I'll just zoom in quickly just so you can see easier. So it's a PHP snippet and I wanna run it only on the front end of my website. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the code that we got from the bricks knowledge base. Now, before I go in and show you how to get the idea of your element and use this function, we need to go ahead and reset our design. So coming back into here, I actually wanna go ahead and get rid of this code block. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that code block. And now we need to add that template back into here. So I'm gonna to go to our admin area. So I'll go up to here and then I'll go down to bricks and then templates. And then here's our lead magnet template. I'm gonna edit with bricks. I'm gonna copy the section from here. So I'm gonna go right click and copy. We'll go back into our homepage and I'm just gonna paste it at the bottom here and drag it into where I want it to be on the page. So now it's actually here inside this page, my homepage. And I'm gonna save my homepage. And then back here in the templates, I'm gonna move this template to trash because we actually don't need it anymore. 
And now looking at our homepage, this is all set up and ready to go. So how do we find the ID of this section? It's very straightforward. All we need to do is you click on the section and then over here it has BRXE hyphen and the six letters after that, that's the ID. Now, if you go over to here and go edit, uh, that just allows you to create a new one. We'll look at that in just a second, uh, but there's no easy way to go and copy and paste from here. What I actually was doing is right clicking and going inspect. And then here you can see the placeholder. I was just clicking into here and then copying from there just so I didn't make any mistakes. And then I would go back to WP code box and I'd put it into here. So if the element with the ID of what we just copied, if the element has our ID, return is user logged in. And is user logged in is just a WordPress function. So if a user is logged in to WordPress, this would return true. And if the user is logged out of WordPress, it would return false. And the important thing to note with this render function that Bricks Builder gave us is by default, Bricks Builder wants to render everything on the page. So it's actually set to true and you're trying to use some conditional logic here to set it to false if you don't want to output that element on the page. So let's go through that. Now, like I mentioned, if you're new to PHP, this is a little bit harder to understand uh, in this format what this is doing. So let's go ahead and just recode this so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So if the element with the ID of our ID, and we can even come down here and add a comment like uh, this ID equals our WP toolkit lead magnet like that. So if the element has our ID of our toolkit, then we could do if, and it's just an if statement. So if is user logged in. So if the user is logged into WordPress, we want to return false. And then we could do else. And then here we would do return true like that. But the thing is with this function, return true is on by default. So we don't actually need to do that. All we need to do is if the user is logged into WordPress, return false, else do nothing. And because it's true by default, it will return to show it on the page. It would be true. So this should do exactly what we need it to do. Every time Bricks Builder tries to go and output something on the page, it looks at this here and then it goes if the element has our ID of our lead magnet if the user is logged in return false and return false means don't output on the page else it doesn't do anything and then it just returns render and render is true by default so it will just output it on the page so again let's save this and then enable this and save. And now if we go to our homepage and we're logged into WordPress and we go down, you can see it's not showing here. But if I go to a private browser where we're logged out of WordPress and reload and go down, you can see it is showing there. Now looking at this a little bit more in depth, if we go back to our builder, let's just say we wanted to give this a unique ID. So I've clicked on this section here. And then instead of using the default bricks generated ID, I want to edit this. So I'll go edit. And I'm just going to say uh, WP toolkit bar and go enter. So now the ID of this is WP toolkit hyphen bar. If I save this and we go here and reload the page and go down and I just have a look at the code. So I'll right click and go inspect and we have a look. You can see the ID now is not BRXE hyphen and then the six random letters. It's now ID equals WP toolkit hyphen bar. But you will notice that if I reload the page here, it's showing here in our private browser because I'm logged out of WordPress. But if I go back here to where I'm logged into WordPress and reload the page and go down, it's not showing. So even though I've gone and made my own ID here, this code is still true. And so you could leave it like that, but if you come back later on and you might be like element ID equals this, and you're like, what, what is that? And you go back into here and you're clicking through them and you can't find it. It's going to be a little bit hard to manage. So we probably want to update our code to use WP toolkit bar. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to copy from here and I'm going to go back here. And you might think you can just go up to here and replace that. So go paste and then save. But if we go back here where we're logged into WordPress and reload, you can see that is showing on the page here. So this isn't actually working anymore. And this is just something that you need to be careful of. If we undo some of this element ID here, 
This only checks the Bricks Builder generated ID. If you wanna go and add your own custom ID here, you need to use something different. And this is what you need to use. Coming back into here, if we have a look at the Bricks Builder doc, and if we go down a little bit, you can see element settings CSS ID. So we actually wanna use this CSS ID, and I'll show you why. If we come back here into Bricks Builder, in Bricks Builder, when you do go and add an ID up here that's custom, what that's actually doing is if we go under the style and then down to CSS, you can see if we scroll down, it's setting a CSS ID. So if we were to update this to something else like lead magnet, you can see by typing it down here, it's actually updating it up there as well. So we want to use CSS ID. So I'm going to revert it back to WP Toolkit bar and click save. And then I'm going to come back here and just copy this element settings ID there. So copy and then back here, let's replace it. So I'm just going to go here and go paste. So if the element settings CSS ID, and then we need to do equals. And now we need to add the name of it there. So I'm just going to go here and go WP Toolkit bar copy and then back here, we'll paste it inside there. And now when it's going through and trying to render everything on the page, if the element that it's trying to render has a CSS ID of our WP Toolkit bar, then it checks if the user is logged in, if they are logged in, return false, which means don't render the element on the page. So return false, don't show the element on the page. And the last thing that I wanna cover with this function before we move on to the final way that we can do conditional logic in the builder is that back here in the docs, if we go down to example five, they actually show you output an element having a specific HTML ID uh, based on a custom field, but we could ignore that for now. You can see that they actually do something that's important to get in the habit of doing if you wanna go down this route is we need to get the HTML element ID and we just need to make sure that it's set. So we just need to initially check to see if it's set and then if it does exist and the ID equals this. Because right now we're not checking if it exists and it's probably just good, good habit to get into doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this from here and back here, let's update our code. And I'm just gonna get rid of that because that's from a previous example. And we're gonna go here. So let's go ahead and add that check. So HTML ID. So if it does exist, if it does have a CSS ID added, then it sets the value of HTML ID to be whatever it is. So if the CSS ID of the element trying to be rendered on the page was our toolkit, it'd go HTML ID D equals is it set? That's all it's doing is checking. If it does exist, then set its value to this, else set it to false. And then here we just need to get this. So I'm going to copy that and we'll go over to here and then I'll go down and paste that. So if it does exist and the actual value of it is our WP toolkit bar. So I'm just going to go and put that there and I'll just get rid of that. And if we wanted to, we could move this up as well and put that there. So, and, and just get rid of that as well and get rid of that as well. And this is irrelevant for this. So this is the final code here. As it's going through and rendering all the different elements on the page, once it gets to our element with the ID of WP uh, toolkit bar, it checks to see if there's an ID there and there would be. So then it sets the value of this variable to this. And then after this, it goes, if there is an ID, which there is, and the ID, so this variable equals this, which it will, and the user is logged into WordPress, don't output on the page. Cause again, we only want to show this if they're logged out. So if they're logged in, don't show it on the page, return false, don't output it. And that is that code there. Now, the thing that I do like about this, if you're comfortable writing a little bit of PHP and you're used to writing everything inside something like WP Codebox, where your head, you're like, I want to customize something. Then you know to go to WP Codebox and you have this all neatly organized. What I really like about this PHP snippet is you can come into here and edit multiple things throughout your website in this one screen. So, I mean, there's pros and cons. The pros are obviously you're editing everything from this one area. So if I had uh, this here, this lead, magnet and I wanted to edit showing this to only logged out users but then there's uh, maybe there's some other things that I have conditional logic on instead of having to go and edit every single template and then go and add conditions for all of them you can just add all your conditions here and you might be able to add a little bit more complex conditions here because you have the full 
editor at your disposal here. Uh, but again, it's 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 not as easy as just clicking things, which is the final solution that we have today inside of Bricks Builder, which is a conditions feature, which is what we looked at at the start of today's video, where we can just click up to here and we can set conditions. So instead of writing this code, if I just disable that, if we have this and we only want to show it to logged out users, we just go click here and we go and we go user login is logged out. If they're logged out, then output this on the page, save, it's done. Obviously a lot faster to set up, no coding required, maybe a bit more intuitive, but you do need to click on each element and set the conditions there. If you're trying to do this across multiple templates, you need to edit every single template. I think most people are going to be using this now, but sometimes, you know, some conditions that you want to be able to set might not be in this drop down. And just knowing this is available to you uh, might've made all this video worth watching. But let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful. I think it is just good to know how these things have evolved over time. Things that we take for granted haven't always been the case. And these things that make our lives so much easier, there's a lot of work that goes into them. And uh, I think we're all happy to just know that Bricks Build is evolving the way that it is. And it feels like it's evolving fast. So really keen to see the features they release in the future. So that's today's video. If you want to learn more about the conditional logic feature inside of Bricks Builder, uh, what I'd recommend doing is probably watching this video here. I thought conditional logic in Bricks Builder had this feature. Really interesting to see how you can go and use some of the advanced features that Bricks Builder gives us to do things. Uh, but I was surprised that this isn't actually built into Bricks Builder. So uh, have a watch of that video next and let me know in the comments if you thought that was a feature that was in Bricks Builder uh, or if you were surprised that it wasn't included. So definitely leave a comment when you watch this video next. I'm going to put on the screen now. I'll see you in that video. Thank you.